Good morning. Welcome to our Holy Cross parishioners and a special welcome to all those who are visiting. We are pleased to have you join in our Eucharistic celebration today as we celebrate God's presence in our lives on this 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our readings today begin on page 1188 in the Red Worship Book. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Reef, and Father will be assisted by Father Moretta. Please join in the entrance hymn, 896, Sing We of the Blessed Mother, 896. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> we have a very distinguished guest here today, Father uh, Tarsicio Moret of the Society of Jesus, otherwise known as the Jesuits. So welcome, Father. It's good to have you here as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Coming together in God's love this autumn day, we take a moment to think of God's goodness and love as we repent of sin and ask God's forgiveness and mercy. Penitential Act A, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, <clears throat> who lives and reigns with you in <clears throat> the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals. But none proved to be suitable partners for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man, this one has been taken. This is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial song, our red hymnals, number 101, May the Lord Bless Us, number 101. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. Happy all those who fear the Lord and walk in God's pathway. You will find what you long for, the riches of our God. May the Lord bless us. 
May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. Your spouse shall be like a fruitful vine in the midst of your home. Your children flourish like olive plants, rejoicing at your table. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our lives. May the blessings of God be yours all the days of your life. May the peace and the love of God live always in your heart. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord protect us all the days, all the days of our life. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made longer than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. to perfection in us. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him, of course. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? And they answered, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, because of the hardness of your hearts, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house back later on, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. <clears throat> he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. She divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might bless them. 
but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, let the children come to me, do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands over them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Praise. Well, if there's any one theme in these readings today, it's the theme of Christian marriage. And Jesus himself elevated what had been going on from time immemorial by way of a man and woman falling in love and spending the rest of their lives together. Jesus elevated that to the status of a sacrament or a covenant. And so let's keep these things in mind as we try to establish our setting here today. In every congregation, there would be married people and some single people. I thought it might be interesting for us, whether we're married or single, it, we've all attended weddings, or in some cases over a number of years. And I thought it might be helpful if we cast our minds back to what we recall is the first wedding we ever attended. Where was that? Down here, right at Holy Cross, maybe? Uh, in another country, maybe? Where was it? In my case, I went to the, the wedding of a cousin of mine who was quite a bit older than I, and I was only nine years old, and that wedding took place in Holy Rose, the, what was Holy Rosary and now is called Mary's Place with great outreach to people who are in Rochester area as migrants or refugees. In any event, as that wedding began to unfold, I thought, oh boy, this is really special. I had never been to one before. I've been to quite a few since, but not before that. In any event, if there's any institution that is under the gun today, it's the institution of marriage. But we need to reinforce what we know from years back as the basic foundational reality of what marriage is. And so, we had then uh, the reading from the first book of the Bible and uh, from the book of Genesis. And then Jesus reinforces that in the gospel that we just had here now. As a server at Sacred Heart Church years afterward, after that wedding at Holy Rosary as a child, I remember a prayer that was offered by the priest when we served a wedding. And that prayer was called an exhortation. And it was addressed directly to the bride and groom. And that, in my mind, summarizes what marriage, according to Jesus, is all about. The exhortation went along like this, just before the vows. As the priest looked at the couple, he said, you are about to enter into a union which is most sacred and most serious. Most sacred because it was established by God himself. And most serious because it will bind you together for life in a relationship so close and so intimate that it will profoundly affect your whole future. That future with its hopes and disappointments, its successes and its failures, its pleasures and its pains, that future is before you now. At this moment, you do not understand what that is all about. 
but you will understand later. Imagine what Jesus enforced and reinforced in today's gospel. And imagine in the old days when that exhortation was read, and sometimes is still read at a Catholic wedding, that future is hidden from your eyes, says the priest to the bride and groom. You know that these elements of success and failure and so forth are mingled in every life and are therefore to be expected in your own. And so not realizing what is going to happen, you nevertheless promise each other to be faithful for life. And there we find those wonderful words, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, until death. And so nothing could be more solemn and no opportunity that I can think of today really helps us to understand what Jesus meant when he talked about the one man, one woman relationship for life. If we wonder about how things will progress into the future, all we need to do is remember Jesus' own words at another occasion. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Please stand for our recitation of the Nicene Creed. What do we believe? I believe in one God, our Father only, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was the Son of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Is it our who has spoken through the prophets? I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. <clears throat> I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Offering now our prayers of intercession, the general intercessions, or the prayer of the faithful. We pray for all married couples, for all single people, and for all whom we know and love. For all members of the church, may their manner of living be shaped by Jesus' openness of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we celebrate Columbus Day, God will watch over our country and for all who, who serve our nation and our local communities that God will keep them from harm and guide them in protecting others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Respect for Life Sunday, that all human life, from conception to natural death, 
may be respected as God's gift and a blessing to each individual. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and all parishes participating in Rosary Coast to Coast today, that through Mary, our mother's intercession, Jesus may teach us the value of faith and we may be fulfilled in living it in our daily life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> that we care for the planet and the better stewards of the earth's resources. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering, that God may give them the courage and strength, and for those who have died in Christ, may be with God forever now in peace, especially David Howell Jr., Eugene Marin, William Maley, and for Marine Marianne Mahar McCabe, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment <clears throat> and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. In our prayer of the faithful, we should also remember, and Nina just referred to Our Lady, Queen of the Holy Rosary. If this were not a Sunday, we would be having as the theme of the Mass that of the Rosary of our Blessed Mother, which we will have this afternoon. Please check the bulletin for details. And let's keep in mind, too, this is the pro-life Sunday in October that we celebrate every year. Eternal Father, bless us all. Help marriages. Help the birth of children. Assist them and help them to be brought to term so that your kingdom may flourish in this life and forever in heaven. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Please join in the offertory hymn, hymn number 642.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his people, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have done their sleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co hires to her eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe, from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
would any minister of communion planning to take the Eucharist to a sick or shut-in person please come forward at this time. Let us pray. Grant us, almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have just received so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. I believe we have some uh, announcements. Hello, my name is Ron Yancone. I wanted a quick talk to you about the Knights of Columbus. As you know, Holy Cross is resurrecting a council of knights. The Knights are a fraternal organization that support our parish, our community, and our priests. Our focus is on charity, unity, and fraternity, all in the service of God. The Knights offer its members an opportunity to grow in their faiths by living an example of charity and good works. For myself, it is a way of doing doing for our Lord in a visible way, a way of doing that affects others. Most of you do this already. Well, now it's our time, our time to stand up for our parish, our priests, and our community. Our ch church needs us, and Jesus needs us. Come join the Knights on Tuesday night, October 23rd, at 6.30. The charter of our council will be started. Be one of our charter members. It truly is an honor to be a founding member. All past members should contact the parish before the 23rd, and all new members need to have applications in ahead of time. The Blessed Mother will be with us. So we get to say Hail Mary. What do you think? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, great for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Thank you very much.
A few announcements. The CMA campaign is now in full swing. Please help us to achieve our goal by filling out the pledge card and returning it as soon as possible. You will make a difference. Seniors and friends will meet this Thursday, October 11th at 1.30 p.m. in the Parish Center. Our guest speaker will address Medicare benefits and changes. All are welcome. This year, Holy Cross Bombers are hosting a Friday night under the lights soccer game at Basil Morella Park. Admission will be a canned food item that will be no donated to Holy Cross and St. Andrew's Food Cupboards. Jeremy Maya's food truck will be there as well. It's going to be a great night for kids, families, and Bomber Pride. Come and join the fun. Father George Ramirez will be here next Saturday, October 13th, celebrating 5 p.m. Mass. Save the date. Saturday, October 27th, will be our annual Haunted Pasta Dinner and Trunk or Treat event. Tickets will be sold after all Masses for the dinner next weekend, October 13th, 14th, and the following weekend, October 20 and 21. Please see the bulletin or website for full details on all events happening in our parish community. Please join us today in church at 3 p.m. as we prepare to pray the rosary in unison with our nation in rosary coast to coast. The rosary begins at 4 p.m. at the Grotto. Refreshments to follow. Please join us in singing the recessional hymn number 984, God in the Planning. There will be a coffee hour today. All are welcome. Thank you, Julie, very much. And uh, Father Gagne just handed me this update of our uh, place in the uh, Catholic Ministry Appeal. As of this Mass that we're, we're about to conclude, we have 226 CMA donors who have pledged 53% of our goal. Thanks to all who have brought us so far so fast. CMA envelopes are in the pews, so we thank you for your wonderful support for that. And I want to thank our Knights of Columbus representative for his fine message today. Uh, let us pray. I think we did pray. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and proclaim the gospel. Thanks be to God.